Good evening, welcome to our virtual event. I'm Holland Saltzman, the owner of The Novel Neighbor, and I'm thrilled to be spending part of my evening with you all. Originally, I was gonna be the host and moderator tonight, but now I'm jumping into the seat to be in conversation with our featured author, David Lehneman, as Aisha Sultan had a family emergency. We will be talking with David for about 30 minutes and then spend some time doing some viewer Q&A at the end. Feel free to post your questions either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you are tuning in, and we'll get to as many as we can. I'm excited to introduce former White House photographer and author of the newly released book, Biden, The Obama Years and the Battle for the Soul of America. David, who graduated from Webster Groves High School and has a number of former teachers here with us this evening, including his mother, Cheryl Coulter, who taught in the Webster Groves School District. David is a graduate of Cornell College, where he studied economics and business before he went into journalism. He's one of the youngest White House photographers ever, having joined the Obama-Biden administration at 24 years old. After eight years at the White House, David has traveled to more than a million miles on Air Force Two, has taken nearly a million photographs, and has traveled with the vice president to 47 states and 64 countries. He lives in New Mexico with his wife and daughter, where he enjoys hiking, camping, exploring new wild places, usually with more than one camera in hand. Welcome, David. Thanks so much to The Novel Neighbor for uh, having me with you tonight. Uh, and thanks to everyone who's joined in. I appreciate all your support and uh, interest in my book. And I'm really excited to uh, actually be able to share with folks since it's on shelves now. And I think hopefully some of you have it with you tonight. Um, I want to acknowledge Dr. Biden, who so generously wrote the foreword for the book. Uh, and I obviously want to give a shout out to my mother, who's watching tonight, uh, along with, I think, a number of my middle school and high school teachers. I'm hoping that none of them will remember how my grades were uh, then. Um, so yeah, it's great to be with you all. David, being an official White House photographer is such a unique opportunity to witness and document history. So let's start with a question that I know many people are wondering, how did you land this incredible job? Sure, I first photographed Vice President Joe Biden uh, when he was a United States Senator running for president in 2007. I was a freelance photographer at the time. I was working for the New York Times, the Associated Press, did some work for the Chicago Tribune as well. And I covered all 16 candidates for president in the 2007 and 2008 cycle. And what I saw in, in then Senator Biden was a real ability to connect with people in the room. Um, he would come in, he would talk to everybody in the room. He didn't just kind of blow in, speak and leave. Um, and so when he got picked as the vice presidential nominee, I started reaching out to folks I knew who had worked on the campaign to see if I could join the campaign. And while that didn't actually happen, I uh, moved to Washington, D.C. and joined the administration about six weeks in and uh, uh, ended up working there for eight years. So it was a, a pretty incredible transition in life to go from a freelance journalist to the White House. If there's one thing that people, I think, remember and know a lot about Joe Biden, it's the importance of family. And I know when I was looking through the book, um, there's just so many beautiful and intimate moments. Can you talk a little bit about maybe what you've learned about Joe Biden through those images and your time with him and his family? Sure. Uh, I think we're ready for the slideshow now, Stephanie. There we go. All right. So I'm, I'm gonna share a couple photos tonight. Um, I think almost all of these are in the book. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of talk a little bit about the importance of family and then some of the photos you're seeing here. So um, 37 years before the vice president was sworn in, uh, sorry, 37 years before Joe Biden was sworn in as vice president, uh, he lost his first wife, Nelia, and a daughter, uh, Naomi, in a car accident uh, six weeks after he got elected to the United States Senate. Uh, his sons, Hunter and Bo, were also in that accident. Um, the vice president was sworn into the Senate uh, at their hospital bedside and uh, made a commitment to them that he would take the train home from Washington, D.C. every night to Wilmington, Delaware, so that he could be with them in the morning when they got up and at night to tuck them into bed. Um, so for the vice president, family really was always the most important thing. And so whether it was grandchildren dropping by the office to show them that they lost a tooth or 
one of the older grandchildren calling in the middle of a meeting to see if they could come over and sleep at his house that night or come over and play in the pool after school. Um, you know, he, he would drop everything, um, for his family. And I, I think that was just, was just so interesting to be in the middle of a meeting and to see that happen. So this first photo is of his younger grandchildren, uh, uh, little Natalie and little Hunter here, and their father, Bo, was deployed to Iraq for the first year of the administration. He served in the Army National Guard, and so they came down to see their grandparents quite a bit, um, and sometimes they'd come into the office in the morning, and so they'd ridden in to work with him this morning, and he was down the hall in the, in the Oval Office with the president, and so they were writing him notes, uh, which you can see in this frame, um, before they, they went back to Delaware. Uh, and I think the Bidens really knew how hard it was for their kids, their, I'm sorry, their grandchildren to have their dad gone for a year. And so they, I think they really valued the time with them, um, and thought it was important to be there for them. This is with his, uh, another granddaughter Finnegan, they're on their way to Poland, I believe, aboard Air Force Two. And they're looking at the map uh, in the in his cabin and, and sort of going over where Poland is relative to other other countries. Uh, this is with his son uh, Bo Biden. It was after he returned from Iraq, and they were uh, holding before an event, I think, in Delaware. Um, so, and I think we've got one more here as well. This is of. Uh, the vice president and Dr. Biden, they're waiting to be introduced to the stage at the Democratic National Convention in 2012. And they're, they're just backstage and, you know, there's all this noise and this energy, you know, it's a, a packed auditorium. And, and Bo just like quietly reached over and straightened his father's tie. And there was something really loving and human and personal about it that's always always stuck with me and it's one of my favorite photos I think that's in the book so that's one of my I mean favorites as well I mean and when you're looking I think when I was looking through the book and it talked something about like 990,000 photos I mean just almost a million photos in your eight years there um, did you were you the one that got to narrow those down and select was it kind of a, a team that was putting it together and you know can you talk maybe about um, a little bit about that first and then I've got to follow up. <laughs> sure. Uh, it was, it was, I, I certainly uh, was very involved in it, but there was a, a team of people involved. My, my publisher was uh, immensely involved and my former uh, White House colleague, Shelby Lehman, uh, who worked as an editor uh, at the White House was, and actually kind of was the instigator for this, this book and this project uh, was also very involved as well. Uh, we started, I think, with around eighty thousand images. So, so sort of a a smaller percentage of of the nine hundred and seventy thousand, but um, and did sort of a really fast first edit that cut down to about fifteen thousand images, and then cut down to about eight thousand images, and then cut down to about two thousand images, and then. And then I think we cut to around four, three or four hundred um, from two thousand. And those first big cuts were hard just because of the volume of images that we were looking at. But actually, um, I, I don't think I was nearly as attached to photos in those those larger calls because I just knew there was no way to put all those images in a book. And when we started getting down into the three and four hundred image range, it became much harder. Uh, what was I, I think both both helpful and unhelpful actually was at that point the the designer for the book uh, Mia got involved and and started laying out pages with with pictures on them mm -hmm. um, so we would understand how many pages 400 images would be which I think was 400 ish pages and and obviously the book is 256 I think so so it it became sort of a page numbers game and then the sequencing of photos and how mm -hmm. If you had two photos facing each other on a spread, how did that work together or didn't? And and that made it easier to cut some stuff. And and I think the hardest images probably were going from from about three hundred pages in in the book to around the the two fifty six. So those last forty five ish pages to cut 
um, or deciding that we really liked two photos and we were going to run them smaller on one page to free up more space. Um, and and how did how did that affect the story? So there's definitely pictures that didn't make it in that I love. That's a bummer, but uh, but I think there's a lot of good content, and I'm there's probably a handful of people that will know the difference. So I think the book definitely tells the story. I mean, I think that there is uh, definitely emotions that you feel when you're looking through the pages. Could you talk a little bit about maybe what was significant to you personally that maybe uh, with some of these photos that it may, it showed Joe Biden's his leadership, dedication, and maybe commitment to the American people? I know there's um, just uh, the volume uh, with family and certainly uh, a lot of these that were addressed, but you know, kind of what that what that meant to you. Sure. Can we jump back to the slides real quick? There's two images here I'm going to show. The first one is. Uh, nope, that's not it. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry, technical problems. Let's see if I can get my navigator back. There we go. All right. So uh, I think I skipped over a family photo there, everyone. Sorry about that. Uh, this, uh, this first photo is of the vice president, and I think it's in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, so at the beginning of the administration, I'm sure folks will remember, uh, we were sort of in the middle of what became known as the Great Recession. Um, the, the housing market plummeted, the stock market plummeted in the, the latter years of the Bush administration. And uh, Congress passed something called the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, which uh, channeled about thirty. Seven billion dollars, I want to say, into infrastructure projects around the country: new roads, highways, bridges, schools. Uh, uh, they did work in national parks, upgrading bathrooms. Um, you know, recovery projects uh, that that rebuilt infrastructure and, more importantly, put people to work. And so, this photo is is like I said, down in Florida. And he's talking to a bunch of the construction workers and just talking about the importance of, of them having a job and how when you have a job, you can go down to the diner and have lunch and you can buy new shoes for your kid for school and um, how people are really emotionally invested uh, in having a, a sense of purpose when they have a job, um, which I think was something that was, was close to the vice president having grown up in a rather working class family that you know, where employment was not always a certain thing. And uh, the other photo I wanted to share, and I think this really shows, shows who the vice president is to me. Um, it was Veterans Day, we'd gone to Arlington National Cemetery. There's a, a large ceremony speaking uh, that happens in a, in a Coliseum up at the top of the hill. And afterwards, uh, the vice president went down to section 60, which is where uh, many uh, veterans of the Afghanistan and Iraq wars are buried um, to visit with families that were there, seeing their loved ones. And, you know, he'd never met this woman before and just went over and expressed his condolences and, and they're just having this moment. And it's, it's really powerful, I think, you know, as as the father of a of a soldier who served overseas, I think he was very aware that of of that that fear as a parent when your your son or daughter is is serving or your family member. So, yeah. There's a chapter that I marked that's called "Every Story Matters." Uh, you mentioned that this next image is one of your favorites. Can you talk a little bit about it and the importance? And if people are following along, I think it's page one fourteen. Oh, I'm really glad you have the, the page numbers because I didn't actually have that for this. Uh, so the, the, the header is Every Story Matters. The photo should be up on your screen now. Uh, and this was during the re-election campaign in 2012. We were down in Fort Myers, Florida. And the vice president had spoken at a rally. He'd gotten off stage. He'd worked the rope line along the front of the room, shook a bunch of hands, went to the back. And a staffer noticed this young man who was seemed a little distraught and just went over to check on him and 
you know, he'd been waiting, but he was further back in the room and hadn't been able to push his way up to the front to say hi. So they brought him back and, and he just, he saw the vice president and he actually broke down and started crying. And the VP gave him this big bear hug, um, just like he'd hug his own son. And, you know, they chatted for a minute. I don't remember any of the conversation because of course I took some photos, but, but wasn't really trying to intrude on a moment. Um, but the kid was interviewed later and I think he was 15 years old at the time. His name is Kobe. And, and he's told the person that interviewed him, he said, you know, I really, I wanted to meet the vice president. I wanted to tell him about uh, all the policies that the administration had put in place that helped my family. He said, you know, we were, we were on food stamps. We were getting support with meals. He said, my other, my older brother was able to go to college because he was able to get a Pell Grant. Um, and he, and he said, you know, I just, I really wanted to, to personally thank someone that was, uh, that was responsible for making life better for my family. And I think for me, this photo is, it's uncluttered, right? There isn't, there isn't a banner in the background. There aren't a bunch of staff standing around. There's not a secret service agent. I mean, there is, it's, you know, six inches to the left to the right of the frame, but but it's this really clean moment. But but in reality, while I like the photo visually, it's it's a thing that I photographed thousands of times in my eight years there. Um, there were there were people that needed to to share something with the vice president that needed a hug. Um, they just needed someone to hear them out and connect with them. And uh, I think the vice president really treated people equally, uh, you know, whether it was a head of state or a kid on a rope line in Florida, uh, he, he recognized that everyone deserved respect and, and engagement. And um, so I think that's why I called this Every Story Matters, because, you know, this little moment really mattered to someone and it's, and it's a beautiful photo. Agreed. The Obamas and the Bidens personally faced tragedies throughout the, the time when they were in the White House. Um, you've definitely got some images in the book that reflect some of those times. What did you learn or could you talk a little bit about how it was kind of being somebody in the room while these things were happening? Sure. Um, so I, um, during my eight years in the White House, had the privilege of photographing a lot of really wonderful moments. Uh, the passage of the Affordable Care Act. Um, you know, we were up, I think the president spoke at 11.15 or 11.30 at night. Then he invited the staff up to the Truman balcony to celebrate afterwards, signed the bill a couple of days later. There's a, a really wonderful photo of the bill signing that's in the book actually as well, although I don't have it in the slideshow tonight. Um, but there were some really painful moments, um, certainly for me, but but even more so, I think, for the for the vice president, Dr. Biden, um, and the loss of of their son Bo to cancer in 2015 definitely was was the, the hardest part of their eight years. Uh, I'm certain. Um, so this this photograph is actually at um, the beginning of the visitation for the second day of visitation for Bo, they had a, a visitation in Dover, Delaware, the state capital, and then this was in Wilmington. And then the funeral was the following day. Um, I think what's really unique about the, the vice president, Dr. Biden, to me, and, and in a way that I don't think I've, I've met anyone else like this, but they really were driven by, by the tragedy of the loss of their son to, um, to continue working to to advance cancer research and treatments, and um, continuing to serve um, the country and get back up and and not just sort of wallow. Um, this is President Obama embracing the vice president during the funeral service, and about two weeks later, um, I, I give or take a couple of days, the shooting at. Mother Emanuel AME uh, happened down in Charleston, South Carolina. And, you know, the, the president called the vice president and said, are you, you know, obviously you just buried your son, you know, are you comfortable going? And, and you know, there was no hesitation. They were there too. You can see President Obama is kind of off in the right 
right side of the screen, but I think the first lady who's standing next to the vice president just kind of looked over and recognized that this was really hard. They're going into basically another funeral service, having just buried their own child. And she just kind of reached over and gave him this really, really strong squeeze on the shoulder. And then I think I've got one more here. Um, so this is uh, later that year, they hosted a, a function for military families, or uh, I'm sorry, not military families, uh, leadership at the house. I think it was the National Guard, um, all the National Guard generals. And the VP was speaking and just kind of kind of started to break down. So it it's, um, oh, and here's the last one. This is, this is back, sorry, those two are out of order. This is back outside. Um, Mother Emanuel AME. So there was a, a large sort of memorial service at a at a uh, arena in Charleston, and then the vice president went to Sunday services uh, a couple days later, um, just to kind of be there with the, the church community. Uh, so you asked about photographing difficult moments. I, I think it's my job was to be there. My job was to document those moments. And I tried really hard to not insert myself in them. And at the same time, it's it's challenging and really painful to photograph the funeral of somebody you know. Um, but I, I think the photos are really powerful and I think they're an important part of the administration in telling the story of the relationship between the president and the vice president. And um, so, yeah, it was it was challenging. You mentioned military families, and it's apparent from so many of the images that highlight kind of the efforts of the brave soldiers in uniform. And um, the story behind the next image is particularly touching. Can you share a little bit more about that one? Sure. Uh, is that up for you guys? Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. So this photo is of the vice president during a trip to Afghanistan. and. Uh, it was an unannounced trip, went to Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iraq, and uh, the vice president met with civilian leadership in those countries, also met with U.S. personnel serving in Afghanistan and Iraq, and uh, we did this little side trip um, out of Kabul. We helicoptered up to a forward operating base in the mountains, and, um, and one of the things we did while we were there was the vice president presented a a bronze star to the staff sergeant in the photo, Staff Sergeant Chad Workman. And uh, this is another one that's a little bit like the, the conversation in Florida with the young man, Kobe. You know, I'm there, I'm photographing it. I'm just far enough away that I'm not really hearing the exchange. Uh, but Workman later uh, was interviewed by the Washington Post and talked about um, both why he got the medal and, and the conversation he had with the vice president. So I'll start with why he got the medal. Um, uh, one of his fellow soldiers was in a, a burning Humvee and Chad ran over to the, um, sorry, Staff Sergeant Workman ran over and tried to open the door and pull him out. And um, by the time he got the door open, it was too late, unfortunately. Um, so that was why he uh, was awarded the Bronze Star. Um, but what actually happened during this moment that I'm photographing is he was telling the vice president that he didn't want the medal. And um, he told the post, he said, I know you don't, this being Biden. Um, and, and Workman told the post, he said, eight years later, I can still remember how Biden looked at me. He has that look where his eyes can see into your eyes. And I felt like he really understood where I was coming from. So um, it's a beautiful photo, the mountains off in the background. Um, but also, I, I think it's just this this really powerful story of, of heroism uh, of our service members that serve overseas, and also um, the the vice president's ability to hear and and understand where people are coming from, um, and to understand why you feel like you failed in doing something really valiant because somebody didn't live. So. It just was a, a really powerful moment for me and, and a beautiful photo at that. Thank you for sharing that with us. Another sort of theme throughout this is sort of the relationship between uh, Joe and Jill Biden. I mean, there's just something that's um, joyful and fun 
And, you know, there's one about, I think it's Dr. Biden is ambush. Yeah. Is ambushing the vice president with a, um, you know, with the water soaker and there's there's snowballs in Switzerland. Can you tell us a little bit about some of these um, really fun moments and what you took away from, uh, you know, about relationships and about their relationship? Sure. I think they, they had a, a really wonderful relationship and it was, it was always so much fun to have Dr. Biden along trips on trips because she was more fun and more lighthearted and she really put him in a good mood and she's also mischievous and there's a i don't think it actually is in the book but there's a, a photo of her, her at least one of the christmases during the white house maybe more than one uh she dressed up as the grinch uh and went um you know office to office just poking her head in and and wishing people merry christmas uh and that was a lot of fun um but uh you know, here she is with a super soaker, and this was during a, a picnic for the White House press corps that they held uh, a number of summers during the administration. And I think this was actually the second time that day that she'd snuck up and, and got in with the super soaker. I think the first time she was wearing a bright red wig um, as a disguise, um, and then she'd gone back inside and changed clothes and came back, back out and, and caught him again. Uh, and then uh, the second photograph, you uh, alluded to before is um, uh, it was 2016 and they had gone to speak at a conference in Switzerland and afterwards they'd gone to dinner at this restaurant. They'd gotten up from dinner and she'd gotten outside just, I don't know, 15 seconds before him and I'm waiting out by the cars and I saw her shoveling up a snowball off the ground and he came out the door and sure enough, she just let him have it. Uh, so, yeah, it, it just they I think they had this really wonderful relationship and, and she she is um, uh, he has this expression about her and I can't remember what it is now. But but, you know, she's you know, he would just light up when she'd walk into the room. It was really wonderful. It seems like a wonderful love story. And as I was reading along, I don't have the page on this one, but I think you have the photos. Um, speaking of love stories, uh, tell us a little bit about this image that was just so fun as I was reading along, had no idea. And then the story behind this one was just amazing. Sure. So this is actually, it's page 148. I think this is the only one that I bothered to write down. <laughs> um, this is a really special image for me personally, because it's the day I met my wife. And uh, schedules at the White House, at least for me, were uh, very unpredictable and kind of chaotic. This was June 11th of 2014. We had uh, what was supposed to be pretty straightforward. We were going to fly up to New York. Uh, he was going to speak at this conference. We we're going to fly back, go home, end of day, probably finish at like six o'clock. We land at Andrews Air Force Base around 5:30, and uh, he comes back out of the cabin and. Uh, tells us he wants to go to a book signing uh, for Congressman Jim Clyburn of South Carolina. So we were like, okay, probably not gonna get home at 6.30, get in the cars, go to this book signing. And then he's like, oh yeah, there's this other, this fundraiser down the street. I promised somebody I was gonna drop by for a couple of minutes. So we go to the fundraiser, finish up there. I think it's now 7, 7.15. And he's like, where's Jill at? So Secret Service is like, yeah, she's at this this reception. He's like, great, let's go there. So we go to reception. And I was in an immensely charming mood as I often am when I'm tired and I wanna go home and put my feet up and maybe eat something. Uh, and the event was uh, co-hosted by Dr. Biden and Senator Mark Begich of Alaska and his wife, Deb Benito. And the vice president came in, spoke for a couple minutes and was shaking hands afterwards. Pretty ordinary for an event. I'm not paying a lot of attention. Again, I'm sort of looking for those, those special moments, but we're not scheduled to be here. This isn't like a big part of our day and I'm grouchy and I wanna go home. And he's talking to this, this woman and uh, she said something about her parents and he's like, we'll get them on the phone. She dials up her her dad, hands over the phone, and dad hangs up on him because he thinks it's a robocall from the DNC. And 
So she turns bright red and I'm now interested because this is now funny and a little different and it's brightening up my afternoon. I take a photo, gets dad back on the phone. Dad talks about how wonderful his daughter is. And at the end of the event, I gave her my business card and I was like, hey, shoot me an email. I'll get you the photo with the VP. We leave. She sends me an email the next day. We exchange some more emails. We get coffee. And uh, our fourth anniversary is in two weeks. So um, a really special day for me. Um, totally unexpected. So I love that story. <laughs> You've got, I forget how many pictures you said in this book. Um, do you just have some other favorites you'd like to kind of talk through with us? Because I think, I mean, there's a story behind every photo. And it's just so, like I said, you there's emotions that are evoked when you're going through it. But what are some other favorites that you have that you'd like to share tonight? Sure. Um, so I think there's, two. The, page, the book is 256 pages. I think there's around 220 images in because even though, uh, I got anxious and started cramming a bunch of stuff in because I couldn't possibly let it go. And so we crowded up a bunch of the pages. We also ran a bunch of stuff really big, um, which I'm so grateful for because it's just really wonderful to see uh, an image splashed across two pages. Um, but there's a couple photos here um, that are just kind of some fun, different pictures. And almost all of these are in the book. So this is um, the TV show called Jay Leno's Garage. And they reached out in 2016 and asked if the vice president would be interested in participating. And since he'd been grumbling for seven years about not being able to drive anymore because of Secret Service, um, he obviously said yes. Uh, got his 1967 Corvette out of the garage and got it cleaned up. And this was the day before the filming for the show. And he went and drove around uh, with a Secret Service agent uh, at the, their training facility out in Maryland which is a controlled environment, shall we say. Um, and obviously couldn't be in the car, so I mounted a GoPro on the dash uh, of the car to, to take these photos. And there were just some really fun, uh, fun moments between he and the agent. And I think there's supposed to be another photo, which I accidentally left out of the slideshow, so that's on me, uh, of he and Jay Leno the next day driving around. Um, this photo is of President Obama and the Vice President there in his office. I think this was also a 2016 photo and they were uh, doing a taping for the White House Correspondents' Dinner, uh, which is this big annual gala in DC. And they were doing sort of a spoof video. The president was talking about what he was gonna do after the administration. And, uh, and Joe Biden is busy allegedly trying on aviators and trying to decide which one better reflects his mood. Um, so just a really a fun, fun, different moment between the two of them that's not on stage. Uh, this was a taping for a TV show called Funny or Die, and the actor is Adam Devine. It's just some pretty weird lighting and a fog machine and indoor Ray-Bans, and that's, that's a thing we like. And another one from the press corps picnic, uh, Dr. Biden did not always uh, get involved, but there was invariably a water soaker or a super soaker fight, I think every year of the picnic. Uh, this was, was a particularly fun one. And, uh, and a challenge for me because I wanted to be right there, but also didn't want to get my camera drenched. And uh, the final photo I'll leave you guys with tonight is a picture that's not actually in the book. Uh, it's of Dr. Biden and her chief of staff, Anthony Bernal. And uh, she had gotten out to the plane uh, ahead of everyone else and had climbed up into the overhead bin, I'm guessing with some help, uh, and closed the door and just laid there and waited. And people would come on, they'd open the bin, they'd try and stick their bag in, they'd scream, <laughs> they'd laugh really hard they'd close the bin, somebody else would come in, they'd do the same thing. So I think this was the third person. The VP obviously did not take the bait, um, but he thought it was very funny nonetheless. Uh, and I think that really just kind of, again, going back to her fun uh, human 
real person. Yeah. So I love that's another one of my favorites. So I've got a final question and then we've got definitely some questions that some of our viewers uh, are sending in and we've got some earlier that people kind of emailed in, but um, just kind of overall, what do you hope folks take away from the the book and the images and about the character of Joe Biden and, you know, kind of his ability to lead um, in one of the highest offices? Sure. I think that, I don't think I would like people to take away from this book that Joe Biden is a man who's grounded in faith and his family. Uh, he's served his country for decades and has never forgotten where he came from. He grew up working class in Scranton, Pennsylvania. His dad lost his job. They moved to Claymont, Delaware, to another working class neighborhood um, because his dad found better opportunities to support the family. There were often relatives living in their house growing up um, because they were uh, on hard times. The vice president spent years overcoming a stutter that still occasionally crops up as he's been mocked by several prominent political figures about this year. Um, and I think for folks who saw the Democratic convention a couple weeks ago, um, you got to see some of that bio, but I think in this book, I really wanted to give Americans a better sense of who Joe Biden is. He's an honest, decent man, uh, and he wants to make life better for the American people. And I don't want to get overtly political here, even though I've obviously published a, a book that will be seen as political in this a election year, but... Um, it is an election year, and I think that there is a clear choice in this election. And I think that the spectrum of people that are supporting the vice president, from Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren on the left, to staffers of President George W. Bush and Senator Mitt Romney on the right, um, tells you a lot about about the choice in this election. And so for anyone that's not registered to vote, I would strongly encourage you to do so. Um, for anyone that doesn't have a plan for how you're going to vote in November, I would encourage you to figure it out. I think there's 54 days to go now, if I'm not mistaken, um, which seems like a lot of time until you're really busy the day before the election. And you're like, I'm just going to sit this one out. And I don't think this is one to sit out. And if you've done both of those things, congratulations. Think about talking to a family member, some friends, maybe some of your neighbors, because millions of dollars of TV advertising turns out some people, but a personal connection with somebody in your neighborhood um, is, is far more impactful. A personal ask to get out and vote, offering someone a ride. Obviously, please be safe about that. Um, but I think, I think voting is incredibly important this year. Um, so I hope you'll all take that away from it as well. And with that, I will stop rambling. So we have at least a couple of minutes for questions. Sure. One of the ones we got earlier today, and you sort of referenced it when you were looking at the picture about the Ray-Bans and the, uh, someone wanted to know, have you ever read, or are you aware of the book series, Hope Never Dies by Andrew Schaefer, which is a, it's a sort of spoof with Obama and Biden solving mysteries together. So I've not actually read any of the books. Uh, I will say that I, I hate to say this on a local bookstore interview, but I have maybe looked at Amazon a time or two to see how my book is selling. And those books do come up around my book. So I'm aware of them. I have been sorely tempted to order one, but haven't actually picked them up yet. Uh, okay. But the covers certainly look like a lot of fun. It's, it's, I read the first one. I haven't read the second one yet, but yeah, they were, um, very fun and tongue in cheek and an easy read. Um, okay. Someone else, uh, Lisa Petted, sorry if I don't pronounce things right. Uh, David, it's great to see you're doing so well. I'm looking forward to reading the book. Would you ever consider going back to the White House? And that's formerly Miss Sparks. Ah, English, I think. I'm hoping I'm getting that right. Uh, so I. obviously was an amazing eight years working there. Uh, 
I am in a slightly different place in my life now at 37 than I was at 24. I'm married. I have a almost 17 month old. She will be next week. Uh, and so I'm a little bit less gung ho about moving to Washington and um, living, eating, and breathing politics 24 7. I am pretty focused on the election, which I just alluded to a couple minutes ago. Um, but I also wouldn't say never say never, I guess. Um, I, I think. I think I'm I'm really focused on November and I'll let January or February play out. Another person who apparently follows your Instagram really closely just talked about some of the beautiful places that you've done photography for and just places that you on your own have covered. Um, do you still have a dream place that you are one one day wanting to uh, photograph? Uh, so my Instagram is DCCL. It's my initials. Uh, I am. Actually, I should have mentioned this earlier, I'm posting uh, a photo a day, some from the book, some not, but they're all from the White House uh, leading up to the, the election. Um, so again, that's why I know the day count roughly. Uh, I've gotten to go some really extraordinary places. Uh, my wife and I lived in Alaska for a couple of years. Uh, I went to a friend's wedding in Australia and stopped in New Zealand for a week afterwards, which was just wow. extraordinarily beautiful. And uh, and I was really lucky and my wife agreed to go on a camping and fishing trip with me in Patagonia in Chile, excuse me, Northern Patagonia uh, for our honeymoon. Um, Uh, I'm certain that there are places I would like to go back to. Um, Iceland's really beautiful. Uh, it's it's really strikingly beautiful. It's just so stark. I think the contrast between new volcanic rock that's being pushed up out of the ground and the wind and the vegetation, and there's these sheep and the the stormy weather. Um, it's really beautiful. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I have a short list like I probably probably should and obviously travels challenging right now um, but I but I've been really lucky to get to go to so many places Danielle Buffington tonight wants to know what was the hardest part of being a White House photographer uh, hardest part I think there was, there were definitely periods where there's just a huge amount of sleep deprivation. You know, you could be gone, you could hit three or four countries in five days um, wow. and can come back. And so you'd sleep on the plane on the way over there. Um, you'd land at 7 a.m. You'd go a full day of meetings. You'd sometimes fly to another country to spend the night. Sometimes you'd spend the night in the first country. Um, but, you know, you'd get to bed at a at midnight or one in the morning or two in the morning if you stayed up working and then you'd get up at 6 a.m and kind of do the same thing all over again that was hard um certainly and i already talked about this for a minute i think the most emotionally challenging thing for me was the was bo's funeral it just was um i, I write about this a little bit in the book uh, bo and his brother hunter were uh, always so good about making us feel like family. If we were there for some sort of more personal time, but I was there for some reason, uh, and he would, you know, I'd like try and disappear so that they didn't feel obligated to invite me to sit down to dinner. And Bo would like come track you down and make you come sit down at dinner um, with the family. Um, he was just a, a really wonderful, kind person. Um, so that was that was really hard. It's still really hard. Jackie Stillwell says, "Hi, David. It's good to see you. We are wondering if you worked often with Pete Souza because she really liked his photo book of Obama." So Pete Souza is my boss at the White House um, for eight years. He was the director of the photo office. Um, so nominally signed my paycheck. Um, advocated for me to get new equipment. Um, and 
I had sort of an interesting working relationship with Pete because we had dueling identical roles, I guess you could say. He was the president's photographer, I was the vice president's photographer. Obviously, he superseded me both by being my boss and working for the president. So if the vice president was in a meeting with the president in the Oval Office, Pete was there and I wasn't. Um, same goes for the Situation Room. But if they were in a public event of some sort in the Rose Garden on the South Lawn of the White House, if they'd traveled someplace to speak at the same event, then we were both there and worked together. And I worked to stay out of Pete's way because his picture came first. And um, that's the the prerogative of being the, the president's photographer. Um, I'm uh, immensely inspired by Pete's work. Um, his book that she referenced is, is really beautiful. Uh, I don't know if she's aware of this or not. Pete also worked for President Reagan for I think most of his two terms and has one or two books from that era as well. Uh, so his, his breadth of work and experience is, is, is really exceptional. One last question online tonight. How involved, this is from Sandra Lynn Hoyer, how involved was Mr. Biden with his wife's and Mrs. Obama's initiative for military families? Uh, I am sure that he would have a funnier quip about that than I can make. Uh, he, the, the Bidens as a military family, obviously were deeply invested um, in in both the sort of the cervix service experience of soldiers, um, but I, I think to a great extent, the uh, the life of the spouse and often children that followed along. So if you move every two years and you teach in a school, you now have to get recertified to teach in a new state. Or if you are a medical professional, you have to get relicensed. And so one of the things I remember that the Joining Forces Initiative, which is what it was called, worked on was to get states to uh, drop a relicensing requirement for military spouses that were moving, um, which sounds kind of straightforward when you think about it. Like if you are certified to teach in Massachusetts, why wouldn't you be able to teach in, in Missouri without having to go redo that, especially if you know you're going to move again in another two years. Um, but uh, it was the first lady and Dr. Biden's initiative and not the president or vice president's initiative. So while they were involved in the launch and often went to events. Uh, I, I think they made it very clear that it was their wives thing and not their thing. Um, so I, I hope that answers the question. Um, I think it did. And there was another uh, one from online earlier today and then we'll start wrapping up. Um, it's, they've already gotten the book and it says, it shows a couple of times that you actually came through St. Louis uh, when you were a photographer uh, with the vice president. Uh, did you take them to a favorite place or when you come home, do you have favorite places to go and visit? Uh, I think we came to St. Louis five or six times. Uh, my mother who's on tonight got to meet the vice president at least one of those times. And I think Dr. Biden as well. Uh, I don't think we ever spent the night. And as I sort of alluded to on the travel front uh, before, uh, we often didn't get to eat a meal in the city. Um, and that would go for domestic and international trips. Um, I don't, I think we got carry out food in Clayton someplace. I. <laughs> but I honestly can't remember where because uh, I think there was a fundraiser and then we stopped and talked to some firefighters outside the firehouse. Oh, we went with Jason Kander to a diner up in North St. Louis, close to the airport. And I do remember getting a milkshake, although I don't remember the name of the diner, but I think the photo is actually. It in is. I, I, now that you mentioned, I remember seeing it in um, the book. I remember milkshakes clearly because I'm a <laughs> grown up little kid. Uh, but uh, no, I, I think my mother was always was always really hopeful that the vice president would come over for a home cooked meal because he just traveled all the time and really needed to sit down and enjoy a, a not to go restaurant meal. Um, but that uh, that's that's not really how um, the the Secret Service or the schedulers uh, think about time. 
so that didn't happen either um but i'm i'm really lucky uh my mom has been um i was on the road a bunch last year traveling for work and my mom came down a number of times to uh, help my wife with our our little girl and and spend some time with her so it's been it's been really nice that she can be such a big part of her life even though we don't live in St. Louis. Well, uh, she has been a big part of connecting us tonight. And so we're really thrilled. She called, I think, probably called the first time, maybe I want to say six months ago. It seems like we've had the conversation for a little while and was like, I have a son. He's published this book. We're like, great, because we get lots of phone calls from people who everybody's putting out their own books and self-publishing and things like that. And so she told us a little bit about it. And we looked it up. We're like, oh, this is legit. Like, this is quite serious. And yeah, th I think we'd really like to talk with him. Um, so we definitely thank your th your mom for bringing it to our attention before we'd even seen it in the catalogs to order. Uh, we thank you for you know taking the time to hang out with us for a little bit tonight because um, big fans and the book is wonderful. And we have uh, got copies in the store. Um, we've got, uh, I think Stephanie's been posting online uh, if people need to order it online. And uh, I thank you for being with us this evening. Anything else you have to share? I don't think so. I, I feel like I've talked a lot. Uh, it's really <laughs> great to be here. Um, thank you uh, so much for getting the book. Um, there will be signed book plates as soon as the publisher gets them to me um, to go in the books in lieu of me being actually able there to sign them. Um, and I guess one more pitch to um, please register to vote and make sure you actually do so. We'll be posting. We're going to have a notary here at the store multiple times who's going to be taking care of helping people that are needing to get their their ballots and things taken care of. So we'll be oh, making wonderful. sure to post that um, uh, later on as soon as that we get those set up as well. It was a pleasure meeting you. Um, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, and we look forward to seeing what comes next for you. Great. Thanks again. Okay. Thanks. Good evening. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Take care.